Who are you? Hi, I'm Nathan Hall Snyder, the team leader of the Stanford Solar Car Project. There's a group of undergraduates here at the, on the Stanford campus that builds solar powered vehicles. And We've actually been building solar cars since 1989. This is our ninth solar car, Apogee. And this car is driven about 4,000 miles, both across Australia and the World Solar Challenge and across America and the American Solar Challenge last summer. So it's a, it's a well-seasoned car and it's, uh, it's done its job and we're actually working on building our next car right now. And, and why do research of this kind? What are you, you know, what, what are you hoping to learn? So the reason the Solar Car Project has been around for so long is because we have a, a myriad of aims. The first aim that you know motivates us on an everyday basis is, of course, we're a racing team and we're trying to build the fastest solar-powered vehicle. But you know we, we do a lot of educational outreach as well. We take the car to local schools and you know we, we speak out to other populations about the benefits of engineering, about education, and engineering, and about solar power. And also one really cool thing we do is we do a lot of cutting-edge research. And the uh, Solar Car Project members from our group actually started, or some members were part of the founding team of Tesla Motors and part of the research that went to the Tesla was actually from our shop and our team. So there, there, there's a myriad of reasons. You've got you know, education, you've got technology, you've got racing and then of course it's just and it's an awesome time spending late nights here working on projects you know listening to music and things like that. How much of this is aerody aerodynamics research? So uh, this car well, one of the or the big focus of this car was actually the switch to an upright driving position. Solar cars used to be where you would lie flat in the car, and that was very uncomfortable. So this car was sort of research related to switching to an upright, more comfortable car. For our next car, we actually worked with Lockheed Martin on the aerodynamics because on when you when you're cruising on a car like this, about 66 to 80 percent, depending on what tires you're using, of the energy that the motor is using is going to pushing air out of the way. So aerodynamics is tremendously important. Now, like a car like this, mo mostly because of aerodynamics, gets the energy equivalent to about 1,400 miles per gallon. So you can go, you could go most of the way across the U.S. on just a gallon of gas if you put a small gas engine in this car. And that's almost all aerodynamics. And a lot of cars, you know, the cars that we have around here, they try to do aerodynamics, but there are just a lot of things that kind of get lost along the way because you have all sorts of practical limitations, like you need space and the cars can't be very long and thin like an airfoil should be. But on, in solar car racing, we don't have to make those trade-offs and we can make the most perfect aerodynamic shape. That's how we can get that kind of performance. And it probably helps the solar to have a, a long, wide shape to, to put a lot of solar cells on. That's definitely the case. Although if we actually had our choice, the car would look more like a teardrop, more like a bullet or a missile, as it were. But it turns out that this optimizing the, the flat shape with a smooth airfoil is the best way to, uh, to get the best aerodynamic performance and solar at the same time. Do you, do you find that team members are going to move to race cars? Because I, when, I, when I hung out with the, Indy, uh, the target Indy race car team, there was a lot of aerodynamic experts on that team. Some of our groups do end up going into racing. Most of the people on our team end up going into the, either the solar industry or the electric vehicle industry. So while well, there are people on our team who definitely enjoy driving vehicles fast, I'm definitely one of them. We've got a guy who's taken this car around the Laguna Seca racetrack several times really quickly. So we do do that as well, but the main focus is, is really, on the, really on the solar energy part. Tell me about the solar cells and how the technology of solar has changed over the last few years. So the, the panels that are on this car are monocrystalline silicon panels, which only in the last couple of years have really come to fruition as the best and most cost-effective way of getting you know, covering a solar car with panels. And the, if you're talking about the progression of solar technology, at least in the context of solar car racing, in 1989, the cars each had 12 square meters, which is twice this area of solar panels, and the cars weighed about 1,000 pounds, and they only went 20 or 30 miles an hour. And now we have a car with, only, with half that amount of solar area, and it weighs half as much, and it's going, they're going highway speeds. So it's just everything has gotten much better. The panels have gotten more efficient, they've gotten smoother, the anti-reflective coatings have gotten better, and just everything has gotten more refined in the last 20 years. And that's, you know, we're getting to the point where these things, a car like this could start to become practical as long as you don't have air conditioning. If you had air conditioning, you know, all bets are off for energy. But with a car without air conditioning, you could probably sell one of these. Tell me, uh, do you store any power? Is there batteries in here? Or do you put the energy straight into the uh, drive wheels? So the car has about 5 kilowatt hours of batteries in it. It's about 130 or so laptop batteries from a MacBook Pro, actually. We use the same batteries. So you can drive for about 150 miles with this particular car without any sun. So you could go at night, and you use that to have a buffer for... You know, because you're only allowed to drive about eight hours per day in solar car racing. and But the sun is up for much longer than that. So you can charge in the morning and evening and then use that power to go a little bit faster than the break-even speed the next day. So but yeah, batteries are really helpful. Tell me about the motors in, the, in this car. Is there any... Uh research that you've done to find better motors and uh, more efficient motors? Um, so the, the cool thing about solar car racing is that you can really optimize for 
efficiency as opposed to power or some other things. So since about 98, almost all solar cars have been using custom solar car built motors, which are optimized to cruise at a specific speed with an efficiency of between 94 and 97 percent. That's direct energy to motion efficiency, which is really, really high. In a gas engine, you only get between 20 and th between 20 to 35 percent. 35 is a Prius percent energy efficiency. So that just tells you just how good the motors are. And our team is actually doing research right now on a really high efficiency motor that will be even better than the 94% efficient one that's in this car right now. Where, where can we follow, follow your team and follow the races you're doing and the, all the research? So we have a blog, it's a HTTP or solarcar.stanford.edu slash blog and we post you know, research that we're doing, what's going on with the team, sponsor details and when we have a race, we have a race blog up there. You can head to the internet. Very cool stuff you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you.